Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Now this is going to be a slightly longer one, but I hope it helps you learn a little bit of something about the game. And what that is, is I'm going to be showing you guys how to master each kind of weapon in the game. Now, when I say master, I'm not going to pretend like I'm the best player in the world, because I'm not. But, I do know how to use most of the weapons and use them pretty effectively. So I'm going to be going through some little tricks and tips on each weapon type and the best way and range to use them at. Let's start with the swords category. Now the first weapon in the sword category is the claymore. And the claymore is a heavy weapon so you definitely don't want to be swinging this thing in one hand. But it is incredibly large and very good for defensive capability. Normally, if you just block your whole body like this, the NPC shouldn't be able to hit you, which is great. As well as that, another great thing with the Claymore is its reach is huge. You don't have to even be within attack range of an enemy to be able to punish them, essentially. You can just... swing away at the enemy without even being close to them so that they can attack. Now, one thing people underestimate about the Claymore is actually how powerful its guard is to hit with. It's guard and it's hilt. So, if you are in some trouble and they get too close, you can use the guard to knock them back, which really helps. Moving on to the next weapon of the swords category. The next weapon in the swords category is the greatsword. Now, the greatsword is similar to the Claymore, but actually has some more versatility to it. So, the greatsword, again, is great for blocking, but it's also an incredibly aggressive weapon when you compare it to the Claymore. It also has a bit more elegance to it. It's still a large sword, but it's a little more graceful than the Claymore, I guess you could say. So, the greatsword I like to hold across my body like this, or you can hold it above your head, kind of like a... Japanese fighting style, and it is incredibly effective either way. Also, the Great Sword's the easiest sword in the game to half sword with. So, if you wanted to go for an easy stab, it is not difficult at all. Even though it's not full supported half swording, you can still do it. Again, with the Great Sword, you're going to use it a bit like the Claymore, where you can have big, wide, large swings, and you don't even have to be within the enemy attack range to do it. And I think that's all we need to know about the greatsword. Moving on to the next one. Now the next weapon, and one of my favourites of all time to use, is the longsword. Now the reason I love the longsword so much is I think it is the most well-rounded weapon in the game, I would say. So, what I would use with the greatsword is I would hold it either out to the side of you like this, but easy blocking or I would hold it forward so you can easily react to attacks. Now the long sword's a little bit like the great sword in the fact that it has some range but it is far faster and far better at poking where you want to. So for thrusting it is way better than the great sword and the claymore. but also is incredibly good at moving fast for a bigger sword. Now you can hold the long sword in one hand, but I don't really recommend it. You lose a lot of the uh, power you get normally behind it. For example, see that takes a lot more hits to kill, but it doesn't work too badly one-handed. So if you are, if you do want to use it with a shield, that is possible. Now again, one thing people don't really do with the longsword that I don't see enough is reverse blocks and backwards blocks, as well as just in general, using your sword to block and hit with the hilt. I don't see people do that enough. And remember, half swording while may not be an official thing, can still be done and it does help with poking holes in people's helmets. So keep that in mind. Moving on to the next weapon of the swords. So the next weapon in the swords category is the war sword. Now, the war sword is a little bit like the long sword, but is more of a piercing weapon compared to the long sword. And actually, 
It has an incredibly nice one-handed feeling. It moves fairly well for being a two-handed weapon, so if you try to use this one-handed, it will still work incredibly well. For example. Now, I see a lot of people using this weapon two-handed, which does also work pretty nicely. As you can see. But, I highly recommend, again, this is the one thing that I see people not doing, Try one hand in the weapon, I promise you it's pretty good. As you'll be able to see here, just let this guy attack. And it's just beautiful one handed. So, one thing to keep in mind with the war sword is as it is a primarily a piercing weapon, definitely go for those pierces. Even if an enemy does a jumping attack or anything like that, just thrust with this weapon and I guarantee you'll kill fast. And with the war sword done I think we'll move on to the next sword. Now the next sword on our list is the Reverend Sword. Now the Reverend Sword is actually a really nice sword, it's got a lot of versatility. It's like a longer short sword or a shorter long sword, it's kind of in the middle and it moves incredibly well. Now it can be used one or two handed and it is very effective at both. So with the one handed is it effective at blocking, bashing, and slicing? Now when I two-hand the weapon, I tend to try and use wider swings, as if you get into a decent range with the sword, it does incredible amounts of damage. And one thing again I don't see enough people do with the Reverend Sword, and I'll probably say this about all the swords, is use your pommel, man. Use it. Like if an enemy gets way too close, like if you're up on guards with the enemy, you can bash them for a bit of space and then finish them off. Anyway, let's move on to the next weapon. And the next weapon is the Antique Sword. Now the Antique Sword is essentially a Gladius, is what I would say. And this weapon is incredibly effective at piercing and it's not bad at slashing too. The one thing this weapon doesn't have going for it is the fact that it's so close range but if you really go fast with the weapon and use it like a fast quick weapon you can do a lot of damage if you take a full aggressive attack style with this weapon it's incredibly powerful for a low tier weapon now one thing i don't see enough people do is using it backhand now i know historically and theoretically that's not powerful but you can get some pretty good stabs with a low sword like that so personally, I think it's actually fairly effective with this weapon alone. Now, another thing is this weapon is so precise because it's short, it can really go straight for any of the weak points. For example. Very, very easy. And with that, I think we'll move on to the next weapon. So, this is kind of the all-rounder for a small weapon. That's the short sword. Now the short sword is primarily a slashing weapon but is pretty damn good when it comes to piercing as well and all round is one of the best weapons in the game for a beginner or a veteran alike. Now I really like the short sword because of how fast it can attack as well as how effectively it can attack. As you can see I just cut an arm off. Absolutely no problem there. Another thing it's very good at is just dismembering limbs for example. So, so simple. Now, one thing I don't see many people do with the short sword is actually it's not bad to throw and pull back out your enemy, for example. As the short sword has very good piercing, it's pretty good for killing enemies that way as well. Moving on to our next weapon. And our next weapon is a fan favourite, and that would be the Riding Sword. Now the Riding Sword is essentially the short sword, but rather than specialising in slashing, it specialises in piercing. For example... Yeah. As you can see, it's got a very sharp point, and does incredibly well at going for those weak points. Uh, kind of like the Antique Sword, but a more refined version. This is very good for poking at the weak points or disabling an enemy completely. One thing I don't see people do enough is trying to go for the neck, kind of like how you would with a rapier. Just straight, 
just straight in at the neck and it's an instant kill and it is so easy to do with the sword absolutely no issue at all very simple now the first weapon in the axis category is the badish now the Radish is an interesting and probably one of the most unique weapons in the game as it functions as an executioner's axe. Basically, it's extremely powerful and very good at decapitating. It is one of the most powerful weapons in the game as it does have a pierce as well, which is incredibly effective. It doesn't function like your normal axe, and I really highly recommend if you haven't used the Bardish much, try holding this handle and see how effective it can be. Because I promise you it's great. And you can even use it to come down and execute people like that. Now, one thing the Bardish also has going for it is its range. If you slide your hands far down enough on the weapon, you can really get some ridiculous range on this thing. So all in all, the Bardish is an incredibly powerful weapon, and if you want to get better at it, make sure you're using this second handle on the head, because it is very good. Moving on to the next weapon in the Axis category. Now the next weapon in the Axis category is the Northern Axe, aka the Dane Axe. Now, this thing's a monster, and the thing that gives this thing such a great advantage over most weapons is its range. The Dane Axe can be held incredibly far range meaning I can attack before the enemy even knows what to do now one thing again I don't see enough people do kind of like with the swords is use the pommel to bash if you play piranha you know how effective that shit is it really you can actually bash the enemy with it you can actually bash the enemy with the pommel and come down with an attack like this Now, another extremely powerful thing you can do with the Northern Axe is called what I like to call Axe Brawling. And Axe Brawling is essentially keep your fist on the head of the axe, a bit like with the Badish, and just punch with the axe. And it works incredibly well if they get too close. Again, long range is not a problem with the axe either. And I would say the one thing to watch out for is try not to hit the arms too much as the axe can get stuck inside them and really fuck up. And it ruins your gameplay completely. Moving on to the next weapon in the axe's category. So this next weapon is a bit of a strange one and I will be surprised if this is anyone's main weapon. But if it is, more credit to you because I don't see enough people use this thing. Now this is the new lumber axe and the lumber axe is really you want to be using it to dig in and go for the head because it has a small blade really small axe head so you want to be doing that with it pulling enemies down from the head decapitations are possible but they're fairly hard with the lumber axe as like i said its head is fairly small so it's more of a kind of embedding axe if that makes sense And honestly, that's about all. The Lumber Axe is extremely simple. It doesn't really need much of a pro to be able to use it, so give it a go. And the next weapon on the list is the Axe. The standard Axe. Now this thing's been in the game since God knows when, and by now I'd hope most people have given it a go. This thing can be ridiculously powerful. The one thing it doesn't have is range. Apart from that, it's just brutal. Now, one thing I don't see enough, again, is something I, like I said before, axe brawling with these axes is incredibly powerful if you want to get really close range. But like I said, axe brawling is incredibly powerful if you want to get really close range and attack the enemy like that. Another thing these axes are fairly good for is throwing. Remember to be throwing your axe if you can. And if thrown right, they can be incredibly deadly. Moving on to the next weapon in the Axis category. Now the next weapon we have are the hatchets. Now these are 
fairly weak weapons, but again, incredibly good for a very close range combat. One thing I would recommend with the hatchets, like I said with the axes, try throwing them. They're really designed to be like a tomahawk. And they work ridiculously well. Apart from that, the hatchets really go for the head, kind of dig it into their face kind of thing. It's not really meant for decapitating or dismemberment. But if you can really get stuck in there with the hatchet, it's great. And it instant kills to the face. So, keep an eye on that weapon. Very fun as a secondary. Moving on to the next one. Okay, so the final axe in this category is the War Axe. Now, this is a brand new weapon, and I think it looks goddamn gorgeous. So, the thing you need to know about the War Axe is it is more of a slashing axe than a digging axe, if that makes sense. You want to be going for clean head chops as much as you can. Now, one thing people need to realize about the War Axe is if you flip it round, you have a piercing weapon. And this is fairly effective, for example. She just died fairly instantly. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. And you can use this pretty damn well. And then flip the weapon back round and slam it down. Now the war axe is one of the better axes in the game, I will say. For a one-handed axe, it's incredibly good. And like I said, going for those head slashes is what you want to be doing. Anyway, let's move on to the next category, which is blunts. Now, our first weapon in the blunts category is the Maul. Now, the Maul has been in the game for a long time, and it is goddamn brutal. Now for the more you want to be aiming for the head and kind of go for downwards or upward swings. Side swings are only good if you can hit directly in the head. So downward swings are pretty much an instant kill, always. And upward swings should launch your enemy high enough that when they fall back down, they die. Now as well as that, the maul again can be used like the axes, like with the axe brawling I said about to deliver close range blows before finishing with a slam. Now one thing I recommend definitely trying with the sledgehammer is just swinging around and aiming for the head. Should be an instant kill as well. Okay, let's move on to the next weapon in blunts. Now the next weapon in the blunts category is incredibly good. And that's the flanged war mace. Now, this weapon just recently got added in U10. And it's one of my favourites they've ever added. Because of this. It is just so damn powerful. And what a, pe a lot of people don't realise about it is the top piercers. So you do have some pierce damage on top as well, which is fantastic. Now, one thing I recommend doing with the flange wall is uh, big, big swings. Don't be going like this, like you would with a sword, that's not going to do a whole lot. You want to put the weight of the weapon behind it, if that makes sense. To launch enemies and basically instantly kill them. Again, big power behind it, and you'll just instantly kill people. And I think that's all we have to say about the flange wall mace. Incredible weapon, and hopefully this gave you some ideas on how to use it better. Moving on. So our next weapon, I'm not sure how to help you master this one because it's a little bit weird, but this is the blacksmith hammer. Now, the blacksmith hammer is incredibly close range, and I would say just go for the head and you'll kill them. But really, it's just going to be bad either way. It's designed to be bad. Now one thing you can do is actually throw the, the hammer. One thing you actually can do is throw the hammer. So. If I just pop into slow mode to make this a little bit easier to showcase. And it does kill very fast if you throw it. So, there is that. So throwing the hammer is pretty effective. So I'd recommend giving that a go. Other than that, it's kind of weak. And 
Really, if you want to outbest an opponent, you want to be going low for the legs and try and knock them over. As they're going to find it harder to hit you. But really, it's just not very good. So I don't recommend using it either way, unless you just want to have a bit of fun with it. Anyway, moving on to the next weapon in the blunts category. So this next weapon is incredibly underrated, and that's the trench mace. Now I actually really love the trench mace as it smacks very hard. Not only that, but it's actually a very nice looking weapon for a blunt. And I think people underutilize the fact that if you push up to here, you can use it as sort of a uh, bash weapon in that way. As well as being able to just brutally swing for the face. Like that. Now, again, like I said with the trench mace, something you want to keep an eye on is trying to punch for the stomach with it while it's like this. It really does good damage. It, it very much disorientates your enemies as well. So it's really good for that. Anyway, let's move on to the last weapon in the blunts category. And the last weapon in the blunts category is the flanged mace. Now, I have a strong feeling that I remember this one being fairly weak, but let's take another look because I don't really use this one. So the flanged mace is another outright blunt weapon and actually kills fairly fast for being a one-handed blunt weapon it's a little, basically a slightly more powerful version of the trench mace as far as I'm aware with a bigger head and really my only recommendation with it is remember it has a pierce as well so if you're getting close range don't forget you can pierce or you smack and they're more likely to die. So keep an eye on that. Other than that, a fairly simple weapon. Let's move on to the next category. Now in the daggers category, we do, do only have one weapon, which is the dagger. And as far as more, it's pretty damn simple. It's just a close range weapon used for really getting in and out fast. It's essentially a hit and run weapon. Now I like to use it as going for the chin or the neck or the side of the head where the temple is but you can also use it to go for lower points on the body and then go for the neck after if you want to you can if you have sectary installed you can bleed your opponent out by st stabbing them a ton of times and it's really more of a uh, a dodger's weapon you're not going to block with this weapon what you'd really tend to do with this weapon is dodge attacks get in couple attacks back out and you can rinse and repeat that. Another thing that daggers are great for is, I'm going to demonstrate in slow-mo, but you can do it in full speed very easily, is dagger throwing. And that is an incredibly powerful move with the dagger. And I think that brings us up to our next category. Now, for me, the spear is heavily, heavily underutilized. So, we're going to go through its strengths and weaknesses. So, its strengths are the fact that it has a shit ton of range. You can really pin people down with it. And it actually doesn't have a bad slash damage either, so you can use that. There's lots of ways to focus on weak points with it as well, by holding it above your head or holding it down. So holding it down is better for that, that kind of piercing, whereas this is better for focusing on the face and taking them down. Now one thing I don't see people do enough with the spear is using the handle as a kind of bash. So you would bash with the handle, poke the spear. And it really, really improves the versatility of the weapon. And the spear being a very simple weapon, I think that's all I have to say about it. So we are going to move straight on to the next one. Okay, so our last category is exotics. Now, it has three weapons in this category. I won't be covering bows or staffs as they are fairly self-explanatory anyway. It is very much a counter and thrusting weapon. Now, you can slash with it, but it's only really to add chip damage. What you really want to be going for is those sweet, sweet weak points. So, what you want to do with the rapier is keep it either cross-guarded across yourself like this, or keep it in front of yourself or forward so you can slap away attacks if that makes sense. 
Now the great thing about the rapier is even if the enemy is blocking, it won't make a huge difference for you as you can get straight through it to their weak spots. And normally one or two pierces is enough to kill someone with this thing. So, an example of how to use this very effectively would be to go straight for the face after a counter. So you would just quickly go like this. Now, since I have secretary, she'll bleed out. And apart from that, I think that's all you need to really know about the rapier. It's just a weak point weapon and it's very fast with pretty bad slashes but incredibly good piercing. So make sure you go for those weak points. Moving on to the next weapon. And the next weapon in exotics is the wrist blades. Now the wrist blades, I have, I think they're very good. I think everyone overrates how incredible they are because they're actually not that effective realistically, but I enjoy using them. So they're again more of a brawling weapon, but the great thing about them is you're going to want to use them kind of like how you use the daggers. You don't really want to be blocking with these and you don't want to be getting hit. So you really want to be moving around the enemy and then coming in for the kill. Now, one thing I don't see enough with the wrist blades is grabs. Now, everyone seems to dual wield the wrist blades, but I recommend using one as it makes it far easier to go for the kill. And with that, I think we move on to our last weapon. And the last weapon we're going to be looking at is the dual blade staff. Now, this weapon is very, very, very underused because not many people can get good with it. And it's understandable. It's not an easy weapon to use at all. Whereas I would use it more like a spear. I see a lot of people not using it that way. And I actually practiced a long time to kind of get the hang of this weapon. It's not the easiest weapon, I will admit. But once you get the hang of it, you're going to use it one or two-handed. I like to use it kind of one-handed. Like this. As I find it very effective as a one-handed weapon. So try giving it a go one-handed, stabbing, and then backslashing with the back part. As well as also, if you're going to two-hand it, don't hold it like this. This is going to get you nowhere. You want to have two hands flat like that, so you have full ways of smacking with both weapons as well as that. If you windmill your arms, you can spin the weapon like this and really do some damage. One more thing is if you do this and then swing round, it has very, very good range. So treat it like a double-ended spear or maybe a double-ended sword. Uh, it basically is just one of those anyway. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope this helped you learn a couple things about your favorite weapon. If it did, let me know what helped and if you've improved this all since then. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell button, and I will see you guys in the next video in a bit.